Let's face it, we're probably not going to have an alien visitor knocking on our door looking to phone home anytime soon. Despite this fact, the search for life in the universe is still one of the most intriguing subjects out there. You're intrigued, I can tell you are. Definitely you, for sure. So with the lack of evidence, if, we can't, if the aliens aren't coming to us, maybe we can spy on them. And I'm going to tell you three ways that we're going to spy on alien worlds. And by alien worlds, I mean an exoplanet or a planet orbiting another star. So the first way we're going to spy on alien worlds is by the radial velocity method. So as a planet orbits, I know that sounds confusing. I saw a lot of crunchy eyebrows. <laughs> as a planet orbits a star, it actually wobbles a little bit from the gravity tug of the planet. As the planet wobbles towards the observer, being, us being the observer, the light from the star appear, appears blue shifted. As the planet orbits behind and pulling the star away from the observer, the light appears red shifted. And if that's still confusing, you've seen this every day, not with light, but with sound. If you've ever heard an ambulance coming at you, the pitch is higher as it comes, and lower as it passes. The same thing that's happening with sound waves is happening with light on, other, on stars um, far away. From that, we can tell the mass of the planet. If the planet's really big, it's going to have a big tug or a big Doppler shift. So I want you to remember radio velocity, it's just like ambulant stars, right? The second way we're going to spy on alien worlds is by the transit method. And lucky for me, someone just covered the transit method, so we'll talk a little bit about it. So we have a starlight, and as a planet transits in front of the star, the light's going to dim just a little bit. And if it's a bigger planet, the light's going to dim a lot more than if it's a littler planet. So we can tell the radius of the planet by doing this. So with the radial velocity and the transit method, we can get the mass and the radius of extrasolar worlds. But that still doesn't tell us if there's life on these worlds. We want to know where the life is. So one of my favorite and the last uh, way we can look for alien worlds is the direct detection method or direct imaging. So a star is so bright that we wanna, if we want to image a planet next to it, it's going to be really hard to do with the light so bright. We have to block the light of the star, allowing the light from the planet to get through. And once we have the light of the planet, we're going to be able to look inside the atmosphere and see if there's signs of life, like biosignatures, such as oxygen, like we have here on Earth. We can maybe start to map if it has continents or water, and other things like weather. So it's a really exciting time to be alive. There's a few people in this room right now that are working on this technology as we speak. Now, how cool is that? What's even cooler, uh, it's a great time to be alive, and it's also a really great time to be spying on aliens, but if we do take their photo, let's hope they're wearing pants. <laughs>